What's up friends? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jess. If this is not the first video you've seen from me, then you might notice a change. Pretty sure this is the first video I'm putting up where I have bangs now, so please only say nice things in the comments. I don't know how to style them yet. I'm still figuring it out, but I think I like it. Yeah, I have bangs now. Felt like I'm making an impulse decision, so that's what we did. Now, that aside, if you are unaware, I am a co-host for the Latin Lit Book Club, which is a bi-monthly book club that features both modern and classic books by Latin American authors. By the time this video goes up, we should have had our second ever live show, which was covering Like a Love Song by Gabriella Martins. And because it's Valentine's Day season and this is the cutest romance I have ever read, I felt like this was the perfect opportunity to do my first ever standalone review. Like a Love Song is a YA contemporary romance. We're opening up on the biggest night of Brazilian pop star Natalie's life because she has just been nominated for Female Artist of the Year. But what should have been a pivotal moment in her career becomes a total disaster when she gets brutally dumped on live television. She becomes a meme, everyone's making fun of her, and her PR team is scrambling to save her image. And so what do they come up with? Their brilliant plan to help her? A fake boyfriend, of course. And thus ensues the loveliest fake dating trope I have ever read. Have I only ever read this trope in one book, i.e. this one? Yes, but I've read it plenty of times in fan fiction, so I'm counting it and I'm gonna say this is the loveliest one ever. I give this book five stars. Objectively speaking, it's probably more like a four star book, but the beauty of reading is that it's an entirely personal experience. This book just brought me so much joy that I couldn't give it anything less than five stars. I just found myself with a dumb grin on my face the entire time because it was so cute and wholesome. If you're looking for a romance book with, you know, a lot of sexual tension and steamy scenes, this isn't the book for you. This really is a pretty innocent relationship. This is more about the beginning stages of a relationship where you're getting to know each other and you're becoming friends and along the way you're falling in love with each other. I love Natalie and her love interest William together. We get some details about her previous relationship and this new one, albeit a fake one, is totally different. It's so much better for her than what she was dealing with with her ex-boyfriend. William is a soft British indie film star. He's, he's dorky and he's silly, but he makes Natalie laugh. They have such fun banter together and that's like the number one thing that I'm looking for in deciding whether or not I like a couple in a book. I'm a firm believer that your partner should be one of your best friends, that you should be really comfortable with them and you should be comfortable poking and teasing them. And this banter does exactly that. It says exactly that to me, that they are friends and they have good chemistry in that sense too and later on in a romantic sense. What I really love is that before Natalie even starts falling for him, William is so supportive of her and really pushes her to confront her own issues and figure that out and work on herself. This is a romance book first and foremost, but Natalie's really going through some stuff, namely a major identity crisis. I'm gonna put this book down. I'm, I'm like tired of holding it up. Natalie immigrated from Brazil at a young age and since then she's felt very disconnected from her culture. She feels awkward and ashamed when she's trying to speak Portuguese and speaking to her extended relatives because she feels like they probably consider her a sellout and less of a Brazilian because she immigrated so young. And then being a pop star doesn't help any of this identity crisis because now she has to confront all of the things about her own self-image she has had to change in order to fit the ideal version of a Latina. You know, she changed her name from Natalia to Natalie, she straightens her hair, she doesn't allow herself to get angry in front of people so that people don't see her as like the angry Latina stereotype. It essentially feels like Natalie is worried about being too Latina for the US and then not Latina enough for her Brazilian family. And I loved getting this discussion in the book. Being Latin American in Latin America and then being Latinx in the US or in other countries are two entirely different experiences with some overlap, of course, but they're different experiences. And Gabriella Martins has an interesting blend of the two perspectives in this book. If you want opinions from the Latin American perspective, make sure to check out the live show so you can get the perspectives from my co-host but as for the latin x experience it was so damn accurate now i'm no pop star i can't really relate to the sellout portion of it of course but aside from that it felt like martin's just plucked all of my feelings from my brain and then put it into words for me. I know exactly how Natalie feels when it comes to the language barrier. It is so damn frustrating to try to communicate and feel like you're missing this word or that or you just don't sound good enough, like you have a very obvious American accent to it. And it feels so embarrassing. I spent a long time feeling ashamed and feeling like family reunions were an ordeal because as much as I would have wanted to, I couldn't avoid talking to my relatives and therefore feeling like I wasn't Cuban enough. 
enough. This book was just so accurate. And then William comes along and he questions all of it. I love a good romance, I do, but I love even more a romance book that is more than just the romance. Natalie's self journey, perfect, chef's kiss. I think Like a Love Song would be a great book for teenagers. Obviously this is a YA book so it was meant to be for teenagers, but you know, YA doesn't always mean that it's the perfect book for teenagers. I feel like new adult gets in there a little bit too often. Like a Love Song is perfect for teenagers in my opinion, and not just for Latinx teenagers, although I think they would relate to most of it. I just think teenagers in general would benefit from this theme of identity. And I also think they would like the representation in the characters. Natalie is like the only straight person in her friend group. You've got sapphic and bi characters, including a male bi representation, which I have never seen in books before. You've got POC characters and a character who casually mentions celebrating Hanukkah. Honestly, the cast of characters in this book is the closest I've ever seen a book come to representing the different kinds of people that I hung out with in college. Obviously not so much now because I never leave my house so I don't hang out with people, but the characters here and their identities felt so natural. None of it felt forced to me, none of it felt like tokenization to me. It was just great, it was refreshing to see. Natalie and William were of course the main event in the book, I loved them so much, I loved seeing them fall for each other and all the little moments of intimacy that come from getting to know someone, and by intimacy I mean like you start to notice somebody's body language and their habits and stuff. But Natalie and William aside, I love the side characters. They're so good. Comparatively, they show up very little. They don't actually have that many scenes in the book. I think one of the side characters only shows up twice in the entire thing, but all of them have such a clear personality. I don't know what their depths are, but I know that they have depth and that's that's what's important here. In particular, I love the friendships in this book. The group chat moments that Natalie has with her two best friends is some of the funniest parts of the book to me, as well as the exchange that she has with her friend later on in the book around the time that they're in what was it? I think they were in Portugal for a part of it. The exchange that happens there with one of our friends, so good. Peak teasing. I'm not gonna say more than that though because then that would be a spoiler but just banter. I love banter both in a romantic sense and a friendship sense and Gabriella Martins does it so well. And now to give you some of the critiques that objectively make this more like a four star book. Like a Love Song doesn't have very complex writing or a complex plot line. It's generally just a quick fun time and I'm okay with that. Sometimes you want just a quick fun read and that's what this is. I would say that the themes mentioned in this book are the most complex part about it which I think is a pretty normal thing, but it also doesn't go too deep into them. It's enough for someone to read it and feel seen, to feel like somebody has finally put into words the things that they're feeling about themselves, but a lot of potential themes are mentioned and then not really explored, doesn't really come up again. That's fine by me. Again, I picked this up looking for a cute fun time and that's what I got, so. My biggest, maybe my only real gripe about it is that there's not a lot of emotional impact when it comes to the plot line. There's emotional impact when it comes to the themes, especially the themes of identity, but with the actual plot line, it was a bit more like, for me, detached. Now I'm about to mention a very common trope in romance books, so common that I feel like you can't really have a romance book without it. So I don't consider it a spoiler, but if you don't want to risk it, skip ahead a few seconds, I don't know. But when we got to the third act breakup, most most I was like mildly sad. I didn't even feel a twinge in my heart. It was more like a, oh, bummer sort of vibe. And yeah, in a romance you expect there to be a happy ending and maybe that's the reason that I didn't feel sad about it, but not true. Not true. Because I love to get into books as much as I possibly can. So even though I know that something is probably going to turn out fine and it's going to be happy, in the moment when it's supposed to be sad time, I'm here to be sad. I indulge in that. It just didn't happen with this book. I was kind of like, oh no, sucks to suck. I guess we got to move on. The most emotion I felt throughout the entire book was whenever Natalie's ex boyfriend was involved. Oh, the sheer rage I felt for that man. I had a lot of feelings about that one. That man had nothing but the audacity and I would like to think I'm not a violent person, but if I were Natalie, I would have smacked the shit out of that guy. So yeah, objectively it's like four stars, but because I had a fun time and it helped me get out of a reading slump, it's five stars for me. I highly recommend giving this book a shot. Even if it turns out that it's not for you, it's really so short that you're not wasting any time giving it a try. And I think it would work for a lot of people who just just want a nice time. And that is it for my review. If you have any advice to give me for future standalone reviews, please let me know. Do you want to see future standalone reviews from me? And if you do, what do you most want to hear about when it comes to book reviews? Do you want discussion about themes? Do you want to hear more about the characters, more about the writing style? And if you're interested in participating in the Latam Lit book club, I will have the Twitter in the description below so that you can check us out. Remember to subscribe if you want more bookish content from me, and I will see you in the next one.